Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Anup Das. I am the chairman of Kenya Bengali Cultural and Welfare Society in Kenya. And uh, we are a small you know, group of members uh, representing the Bengali uh, culture uh, in the country. Uh, country. And uh, we do a lot of social and welfare activities apart from our cultural activities in Kenya uh, on a regular basis throughout the year. Uh, we are very happy uh, to be part of the Independence Day movement organized by East FM uh, this year. And we would like to congratulate all the Indians uh, living in Kenya uh, a very happy Independence Day. Let me start with, you know, uh, just giving a brief introduction about uh, the Kenya Bengali Cultural and Welfare Society. Uh, so this uh, institution actually has been there for quite some time in Kenya, which started by, you know, a few of the Bengali families which were here. Okay. So uh, to give you a brief, uh, let me tell you about how it started and uh, uh, the journey uh, of the Bengalis in Kenya. But... Uh, before even going to the Bengalis in Kenya, I would like to tell you about what Bengalis are and how they are an uh, integral part of uh, the Indian community and how what is their uh, role and significance in uh, the independence movement of India in uh, giving a cultural identity to the country and uh, the you know things still continue uh, as part of the you know culture. So if you Come across a you know typical Bengali you know just just to give you a kind of a flavor of how mm -hmm. a typical Bengali when you interact. First of all, uh, one thing which uh, you you can be rest aware of that the Bengali gentleman or lady will be definitely uh, very well educated. Uh, yes. They must have done their graduation or post graduation. So first of all, is they will be very well educated. Then uh, with education, what comes is they will be very polite, and the, the Beng Bengali language is also very sweet. Yes. You know? So what happens is, so uh, whenever when you interact with them, you will find them very polite, very humble, and you know, talking from uh, you know the heart, heart and all. And they love to talk. They love to you know, uh, chat. We call it adda. Adda is a Bengali you know word for you know uh, having a group discussions within the same community or in different communities. So, so they they love to you know uh, talk about everything uh, around the world, not only limited to any particular subject. So they may, may be talking about football uh, and supporting the Brazil team. And at the same time, they will be talking about, you know, uh, something happening in uh, the UK or US so, or uh, something to do with their own, uh, you know, family circles within the, the community where they live. So it can, it, it varies, you know, they talk about everything from food to culture and everything. So, so that's why, why the, you know, when you come across a typical uh, you know, Bengali person, it makes it in, very interesting because they have got the knowledge of uh, or the interest in each and every subject you talk around. So they can talk with any subject. You just give them a topic and they would love to talk about it. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> and whatever the knowledge they have. So that's how it makes it very interesting. Then another thing which you'll find is apart from the, you know, the uh, behavioral aspect, you will find that they have got some or other talent, you know, they are very talented in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the cultural identity. Either mm. they sing very well or they do poetry or they are, uh, they draw very well. They are artists or, uh, you know, you, 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 even, you, even you can find that either they are, you know, very good in sports or they yes. are very good in playing some instruments. So something yes. or other. So, you know, so what happens is it's part of the growth, uh, you know, culture of the Bengali is that if you are a, a born in a Bengali family, mm -hmm. a couple of things are given that uh, not only the food, food, uh, we are, you know, very special connoisseurs of food and we love, you know, our food and uh, yes. we love to experiment <laughs> with it and we uh, the different varieties and all that. So apart from the food, so education comes uh, and with education, what comes is that you have to take at least one or two cultural aspect like whether you have to learn singing or dancing or playing some instrument or so this this comes to, with, from the childhood you know so a Bengali family they ensure that the child actually goes through one of the uh, education uh, is part of the culture and then they will also try to push you for you know maybe one of the sports or maybe they will ask you to you know do some quiz so you you always have you know two or three co-curricular activities apart from your education there are yes. two or three co-curricular activities which you know you know grows with you you know from your childhood so what happens in the upbringing itself you will find that 
uh, yes, of course, uh, apart from their knowledge and all that, so they will al always be culturally culturally inclined to, uh, you know, something related to, you know, uh, either uh, singing or dancing or poetry or sports or quiz. So, they, uh, so they, they will be linked to each other. So that's why you will find that uh, there is a very beautiful spirit which which develops within within that. So you always feel good to, you know, talk to such a person, you know. So that's how yes. they make make a difference. Now, Absolutely. Now, <laughs> um, I completely agree with this. I have a few Bengali friends and I can't deny any word the what you've mentioned. They're all so artistic. Now, now coming to, you know, the contributions, you see that I would say the freedom movement started in India in 1857. Yes. It started from Bengal. You know, the origin was from there because, of course, the British invaded from there and Calcutta was the capital of uh, the British capital and all that. So, yes. but with that, what happened is, the, with so much of dominance of, you know, uh, previously the Mughal uh, Mughal Empire, they settled in Bengal. Then after that, the British came and settled in Bengal. But Bengal never lost its cultural identity. Yes. So they were always they always ensured that they are always in the news. So what happened is, uh, let me go uh, to the dates like where I'm sure you've heard about people like Raja Ram Mohan Rai, who basically changed the uh, worked against, uh, you know, where, where we had a tradition of Sati Dahan, where, you know, the wife, when the husband died, the wife used to be burnt alive. Uh, yes, the, uh, yes. Uh, so that was the old culture. So he fought against that. So that's how, uh, you know, the journey started. Then uh, you, I'm sure there's another gentleman uh, you may come across. It's called uh, Vidya Sagar. Vidya Sagar was the you know founder of education. So he ensured that every child, you know, in Bengal they go through you know, basic education. So that that's how the journey started. You know, I'm talking about before uh, the British era as well. And then yes. uh, during the uh, British time period, we have the biggest of the biggest, you know. Uh, freedom fighters and uh, religious leaders. I'm sure you everybody has heard about Swami Vivekananda, one of yes, the greatest yes. stalwarts and educationist and the leader of uh, Bengal, who you know uh, uh, spoke in World Religious Conference in Chicago. Uh, yes. You know uh, where he mesmerized everyone when he addressed everybody with "My fellow brothers and sisters." Yeah, yes. and uh, and he is the uh, you know one of the most significant. Uh, youth icons and personalities uh, of you know uh, Bengal, not only Bengal of India, uh, representing that how we are different and how we think differently and how we can reach our goals uh, without uh, compromising on our ethics and principles and all that. So that was Swami Vivekananda, and then through that, uh, with the help of uh, you know Ramakrishna uh, Ram uh, Ramakrishna Paramhansa, uh, his guru, they established this Ramakrishna mission. Uh, all across the world, actually, and they provide free education, higher education, kind of, you know, uh, plus uh, uh, the Sanatan Dharam and all that uh, they propagate. And that's, a, that's another, you know, I would say, uh, branch uh, of uh, Bengal they, they know, and it, it's uh, very uh, spread all over the world and it's core to the, you know, Bengalis. Then uh, I'm sure you heard about. Uh, 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 I, I think the greatest uh, freedom fighter uh, of uh, for all of us, Nitaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and 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 uh, how he significantly made the difference in the independence movement of India, and how he fought against uh, the British by creating Azad Hind Faj, and the way uh, you know the British uh, got scared, and then that made them you know uh, ran away from the country and all that. So. So he, he's a different kind of hero, and we all worship him in terms of uh, the uh, significance and the achievements uh, and how he helped us get our independence. Yeah, and and in fact, in fact, before before uh, uh, Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose, there were uh, you know freedom fighters like uh, uh, Ram and all who who, uh, who got you know uh, punished at the age of you know uh, 18 and 19, and one of the, the first ones to get you know, punished by the British uh, death sentence and all that. So they are all known for that. Uh, then uh, the origin of, uh, uh, in fact, uh, many of the cultural aspects of uh, the country, from starting from the constitution to everything, there, there are significant roles played by Bengali. Uh, and I'm sure you know about uh, the Bollywood industry, how it evolved uh, from, 
from you know as the Burman, Adi Burman to you know Himan Kumar to Kishore Kumar to you know it's full of the Bengali talent all over yes. you know from yes. from actors to directors to you know singers and I'm sure you know about uh, Rabindranath Tagore, the first Nobel laureate of Bengal, yeah, uh, from India rather. You know, and uh, uh, and how he is revered as uh, you know as, as the cultural epitome of you know uh, how he uh, developed uh, the different poetry and singing of Bengal and still and created a university called Shantiniketan and uh, uh, you know we still you know uh, for uh, Rabindranath and along with him comes natural uh, Islam and all that so there are a lot of you know. Um, uh, culturally dominant, you know, and predominant, uh, you know, uh, people uh, who we can recognize, you know, through Bengal. So whenever we talk about Bangla or Bengal, so uh, these leaders come, you know, like you know, spontaneously, yeah. Uh, and then uh, when we talk about uh, Bollywood, aut automatically, you know, uh, people like Satyajit Ray, you know, uh, the the kind of a significant impact he uh, made uh, through his, you know, uh, portraits of uh, movies and uh, his art and direction and all that. So, so uh, there are so many things to talk about. So that's why you know, Bengalis are always very interesting. Now that coming to the question of... <laughs> it's a very vast <laughs> community, that much I know, because yes. coming from Mumbai, yes. even I have like quite a few Bengali friends and even here, in fact. So uh, it's just amazing to know how much creativity lies within the community. Absolutely, absolutely. And now, of course, now, the second question, like if you do celebrate India's Independence Day in Kenya, how do you do it differently or how do you do it rather as a community? So, so coming to that, let me tell you about uh, the community we have here, the Kenya Bengali Cultural and Welfare Society. Uh, uh, this actually a non-profit association where the first thing it starts with the cultural and welfare society. So it is not a religious organization or you know something like that. So, so first and foremost, in our name itself, it's a cultural and welfare society, and it, start, it got established in 1996 in Kenya. But uh, we still have the fourth generation Bengalis, uh, two, three families who are living in uh, Bengal who came almost 100 years back and they're still uh, you know, there. And uh, along with that, we have around 80 Bengali families who are uh, members of the association who live in Kenya, in Nairobi specifically. And uh, what we do is we perform various uh, kinds of uh, social and welfare activities along with uh, cultural activities throughout the year. So specifically talking about, uh, you know, uh, the cultural activities, uh, you, we, we are talking about, you know, the 15th August. So what we do is uh, we we have a couple of programs which we do. Because of the pandemic year, we were not, we were like uh, not able to do much, but still virtually we are doing a lot of uh, you know, things. We uh, Last month we uh, did a virtual program where, uh, there were participants from uh, you know four or five different countries. So uh, apart from Kenya, we had participants from Uganda, Tanzania, South Africa, uh, India, and Bangladesh. You, you can understand uh, you know uh, so many countries participated together. We where we performed live uh, you know uh, singing, dancing, and poetry and all that. Now during fifteenth uh, August uh, every year, what we do is we do a kind of uh, you know drawing competition with our uh, kids uh, talking about the theme of uh, the independence. So we make them organize. Uh, we ask them to, you know, draw uh, about uh, the independence uh, movement and uh, how to celebrate uh, the 15th August. And then we also have some bit of little bit of cultural program where we sing a lot of uh, songs related to uh, the national nationalist theme and all that. So this normally we do, and if if uh, the uh, you know uh, situation permits, so we we get together, we meet, and we celebrate uh, by you know uh, uh, first first and foremost uh, doing an adda adda. I explain to you what is adda. It's like, mm -hmm. like chit chatting and talking about uh, the you know the event and all that. And then uh, there is, there is a. a, a uh, interesting part of the singing part. So we have got many talented, uh, you know, people in the community who sing very well. So we sing, and then the children, uh, you know, they do perform some, uh, you know, small performance and activities. 
sometimes we also uh, organize quiz shows. So what, what happens to be organized quiz programs where they participate and it's related to the independence movement. And it ends with food, a uh, variety of food. So that's, that's how you know, uh, we sometimes celebrate uh, the 15th August. Uh, that and, is wonderful. This, so is there anything planned for this year? So this year, so what we are doing is uh, because of the pandemic, we are not able to meet physically. We already had a uh, planned picnic, you know, uh, in August uh, for the month of August, where we thought of, you know, uh, we'll get together all of us and then we will celebrate. But unfortunately, because of the rise in the COVID numbers, we had to cancel this program and postpone it for a later date. So, uh, so no physical event. But what we are doing is we are trying to organize a virtual event. And uh, that is what we are working on right now. And uh, if uh, this goes well, uh, so the virtual event calendar says uh, that this will be celebrated around 19th of September, where we will have a, a live Facebook uh, and YouTube telecast, where uh, part, there will be participants from Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, South Africa, India, uh, you know, and some celebrities will also join this virtual program. Uh, wow. And it is going to be a three hour, three hour long program. Yeah. I definitely is... send you an invite. Yeah, the link and all that. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Anup. I really appreciate for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Nilofa. Bye. See you.